For many of us, the history of aviation is full of heroes, reaching ever higher. We remember those who flew firsts, and who set records. All too often, we forget that the conquest of the skies was not without cost and failures. Many of the early aviators died in their efforts, and remain all but forgotten, and some remain unnamed. At various times, and in various groups of aviators, the death rate was reported to be as high as 87%, though the overall death rate was of course much lower than that. In order to honor those who were successful and to those who gave their lives to give us wings, the following list of Caribbean events of historical significance has been compiled. The first aerial flight over Venezuela was carried out in Caracas on 29 September 1912, by the American pilot Frankie Boland, who became the first person to fly a plane over Venezuelan territory, together with his assistant Charles Hoflick, in a biplane designed by Boland, which he named Bluebird, a tailless spy plane, of his own design and manufacturing. Constructed of wood and fabric with a 60 horsepower, 45 kilowatts, engine and weighing 300 kilograms, 660 pounds. In 1912, General Roman Delgado Calbord invited American pilot Frank Boland, a member of the Boland Aeroplane Motor Company, to visit Venezuela. Boland, accompanied by Charles Hoflick and equipment, arrived aboard the steamship SS Maracaibo. On arrival at Caracas the aircraft was assembled and arrangements were made for the event to happen on 29 September in the grounds of the Hippodrome El Paraíso, where many city residents and the President of the Republic, the General Juan Vicente Gómez witnessed the event. The flight lasted about 27 minutes, flying across the city from west to east landing back at the Hippodrome El Paraíso. At the second flight, performed on October 6, 1912, Hoflick suffers the first aviation accident in the country, when on takeoff from the Hippodrome El Paraíso at Caracas, his aircraft flipped over causing serious damage to it and minor injuries to the pilot. However despite the crash, for the following weeks, they had executed a tour in Venezuela, making flights in Valencia, Puerto Cabello, Barquisimeto, Maracaibo, and Ciudad Bolivar. Saying goodbye to Venezuelan on January 15, 1913, the aviator headed to Trinidad. In January 1913, ten years after the, the Wright brothers had made their first motor flight, the intrepid American aviator Frank Boland and a party of four arrived in Trinidad and brought the world of aviation to the tranquil skies of the British colony. Frank was one of a trio of Boland brothers who, like the Wright brothers, had started in the bicycle business and progressed to the world of aviation and its flying machines. Unable to copy the right flyer because of patents on the control surfaces, the Bolands had invented an entirely new method of control, known as the jib. His machine had neither tail, rudder, nor ailerons and avoided the right patented principle of balancing by wing warping and steering by rudder. It was controlled by two pivoted vertical surfaces, triangular jibs, mounted between the outer ends of the biplane's wings. These control surfaces were very unorthodox, but in the opinion of Wilbur Wright who witnessed a demonstration, highly efficient. In fact he said that he had never seen an aeroplane turn in a smaller circle than the Boland machine. Frank Boland arrived in Trinidad to fly an airplane here. It was to be the first ever air flight in Trinidad. He and his six-foot-long machine had already won fame in South America, where his feats had drawn thunderous applause. In those very early days of aviation history, he had drawn great applause as he toured South America in a biplane he had constructed himself. When the Bolands arrived in Trinidad they learned that the governor of Trinidad Sir George Le Hunt, had a planned trip and could not be present for the planned demonstration on the 25th. Boland decided to advance his presentation, to give a special flying display which would take place on Thursday 23 at the end of the afternoon, when the light fell. Frank Boland, a young man of 36, was going to attempt flying his aircraft at Queen's Park Savannah on Thursday January 23, 1913. Large crowds assembled at Queen's Park Savannah to see history made that Thursday January 23, 1913. The weather conditions being perfect, he decided to make a trial flight. Within view of a large crowd, the flying machine was made ready for flight. 
Amid deafening cheers, the Boland biplane was rolled out of a small tent that had been set up to the east of the Grand Stand in the Savannah. Boland was confident, the crowds who had paid to see this spectacle were excited, but some were nervous. The governor, Sir George Lahunt, also seemed nervous. But he walked across from Government House, shook hands with Boland, and wished him luck. The gallant aviator went to his airplane, climbed into the cockpit amid loud cheers. The first of those magnificent men in their flying machines was about to perform in Trinidad. Frank Boland cranked up his 60-horsepower canvas and wood biplane and maneuvered westward along the green then stopped and turned around. The plane now raced back along the green going eastward, he caused it to lift off. A dramatic spectacle, said the Port of Spain Gazette of those first few seconds. With the good wishes of the crowd and loud cheers, Boland took off on the first flight from Trinidad soil. He ascended in the evening and flew for some time, after rising about 70 feet and most of the spectators saw the wonder of a flying machine in action for the first time with loud cheers. Boland completed a first lap. It is probable that no Trinidadian had ever seen an aeroplane before and the excitement at the savannah as Boland soared upwards was at fever pitch, but alas, tragedy soon struck. Boland lost control of the biplane, which was flying low in wind turbulence and his machine descended so quickly it struck the ground with terrific force, throwing Boland out of the pilot's seat. Two doctors who rushed to the scene were unable to save him. The machine was smashed and the aviator was found dead beneath it. The ribs on his left side pierced his heart and he probably died instantly, leaving the watching crowd in shock. The shock of the tragedy numbed the watching crowd and ended the previously triumphant first tour of the Caribbean and South America, according to a report in the Port of Spain Gazette of 24th of January 1913, the very Reverend Father Sutherland O.P. said the last offices for the dead, the deceased being a Catholic. Boland's body was taken to the Colonial Hospital, where the medical report reported. Fracture in the left clavicle and seven ribs, one of which pierced his heart. Boland's body was taken from the Colonial Hospital to the Church of the Holy Rosary and then interred at the La Perouse Cemetery. It is said that the body was later exhumed and shipped to the United States to his hometown for burial at the St. Mary's Cemetery. But his two brothers did not give up. The Bolands remained active in aviation well into the Second World War. Frankie Boland. Pioneer, aviator and aeronautical engineer the first person to fly an aeroplane in Venezuela and Trinidad. 1880-1913